It was the supremacy battle with Lamidi Apapa. Second was the allegation of misappropriation of funds raised from sale of forms for the 2023 general elections. And now the Nigeria Labour Congress are on the neck of Julius Abure. The Labour Party chairman over claims that his NWC wants to organize a secret party convention without carrying both the NLC and the National Assembly caucus of the party along. How many upheavals can Julius Abure deal with? within the space of one year? And how will this affect the fortunes of the Labour Party as one of Nigeria's opposition parties? This is the Eastern Eye. I am Alex Oboro. You're welcome to the Eastern Eye here on Apia TV, where we X-ray the political, social, and economic developments around us. Joining me tonight to share some perspectives on the developments within the Labour Party is the chairman of the Labour Party in Enugu State, Barista Kasmia Abu. He's joined tonight by Barrister Nadume of Okansi, who is uh, the Enugu West Senatorial Chairman, or I should say Enugu West Chairman of the Labour Party. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me on the Eastern Eye tonight. Um, let me start by asking the Chairman of the Labour Party in Enugu State, because it looks like Every two weeks, something will happen within the Labour Party. I think you were here just within two weeks, a week and a half ago. And we were discussing something entirely different about the likely defection of some Labour Party members. And now, we hear that the NLC, one of the biggest, I think the biggest stakeholders in your party, they are saying that uh, your chairman, national chairman, Julius Sabure, wants to conduct a secret convention. What is that about? Uh, well, thank you, Alex Obodo, and good evening, my fellow Enuguans and Nigerians. Well, um, I think um, we are getting something wrong somewhere. When you mention secret convention, I wonder whether that convention is being done in the night. <laughs> Or whether the convention is being done in one room where only one one delegate will attend and elect and elect uh, members of NWC National Working Committee. Uh, uh, Labour Party has become a kind of uh, a nobody we read uh, during our days in secondary school one week one trouble, but it's part of the groups of any human being or an, or a body. Organization of, of, of that sort. You are aware that um, before 2023 general elections, Labour Party had only had her presence in um, Ondo State and Enugu State under now the school senator Okezia, popularly known as Ideke. Labour Party is a growing party in context of Nigerian politics. Is a party that has come into all things of public sinus of uh, uh, public eyes. And uh, you cannot take it away from the party or anybody that at that level all eyes will be on them. Let me say this. I'm just coming back from a neck meeting of a Labour Party in Asaba. In attendance, we are the next NWC and our candidates. In 2023 general election, His Excellency P. Toby. And uh, we asked certain questions. Why is NLC trying to destroy a house they built for a long time? NLC is a stakeholder in the Labour Party. You remember that uh, before Julius Abure, under Abu, Abu, Salaam, Abu, Abu Du Karim Salam of late, may so rest in peace was chairman before Julius Abure. And as he was claiming that they formed the Labour Party, they had all the documents of the Labour Party. And they held to that doc those documents. And when Salam died, we had a plethora of cases in courts. Plethora of cases in courts against the Labour Party from NSC. Then Julius Abure came in and went into negotiation <coughs> with Ayubawaba. The then NSC chairman, president of NSC. 
I will have And in the course of the negotiations, the NSC released documents of the Labour Party to the Labour Party. And uh, there was an agreement, a synergy, whereby the Labour Party, uh, NSC, had their members, NSC and TUC, had their members in NWC of the party. NLC has a, a Mrs. Uh, Lydia. And uh, TUC has a Ayo. Miss Ayo, I wouldn't like to pronounce the names because it, that other name is very, very long. <laughs> but it's Ayo from Southwest. And Lydia is from the North, who is now representing NLC in the party. So you that's, can, in, that's in the NWC. In NWC. You can now see. There's no like secrecy in Labour Party. The LNC has their own members. In any good state, for instance, we have NLC and TUC members in any state working committee. And that, and that has been the understanding in Labour Party. Let me come back to what they call secret convention. The party concern is very clear on who should, should now give notice of conventions. It is the secretary and the national chairman of the party. After the meeting of NEC, National Executive Council of the party, and National Working Committee of the party, the NEC is the highest organ making uh, body of the of, uh, Labour Party. The NEC comprises the NWC and the state chairman and secretaries of the party. They are the people that take the final decisions in. Labour Party. So we met and approved the convention. We met last two moons because we are aware that last year in Asaba, I was the one that moved the motion for extension of the tenor of this particular body of NWC to two years. P2B was there. All elected members were, we are all there. And TUC and LLC were all there. And when I moved the motion, there was a kind of consign from TUC and LLC and P2B. They left and came back and said it has to be reduced to one year, which ends by March this year. And all of us agreed. By then, our members elect who have not been sworn in, well, that was March. They were sworn in by May 29th. They were all there. I went with all members of the new state elected members. Of National Assembly and our Assembly members. Ideke was there, Sirakus Meha was there, uh, Stelis Wodo was there, uh, Paul Namuchi <coughs> was there, um, and some other, and many others. They were all there. Ogara was there, Malaki Uechi, we were all there, who are members of the House of Assembly. And the, we approved that their status should extend from last year to March this year for a convention to be held to elect new members of NWC. And you are aware that you cannot elect members in a convention without the knowledge of INEC. We met last two months and approved this date of March 29th for convention. And we wrote INEC, the law party wrote INEC, and told INEC that we organized the convention by 29th of March. Unfortunately, so so and, and typically in that right up, you didn't say you were organizing uh, a, a secret convention. No, there's no way we can write secret. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, there's I'm not a like secret about it. So why is this just a word? Why why is the NLC alleging? Let me come. Let me come. That is I want to explain this little to Nigeria so that we understand that there's not a like secret in our convention. We now wrote with 9th of March. Then there was a problem from the 50, Christian Faith Force. They now said by the night they are still observing Lent. Lent. I should bring that date back to 27th. The party wrote back to INEC that the ninth date has been cancelled. We are now choosing 27th. INEC agreed. And that is the position of the law because if you don't write INEC, anything you do in party is purely null and void. Then LNC now is now saying that they are not aware. Whereas they have Mrs. Lydia in NWC, who was acting when Abure was 
but this was suspended. His leader was acting because she's the vice chairman of the Labour Party. Mr. Ayo, who is from TUC, is equally was equally in that attendance to that meeting. And we all, all of us we are in Asaba. Just this morning we left Asaba to have these decisions, and we are preparing for the particular convention. And the convention is very clear. It says has been attended by chairman and secretary and NWC members, president and deputy, vice president if elected by the party, governor, deputy governor if elected by the party, commissioners if elected by the party, local government chairman if elected by the party, states working committee, and delegates from states. And local government chairman and councillors elected by the party. You are aware that we have 34 members of House of Rep and some senators. These are the people entitled to attend this convention. Will they attend it? Of course they will attend it. Because part of the allegation from the NLC was that uh, also the House of Reps members of the Labour Party were not... They will not say that well. because they were invited to the Labour Party uh, office and the end of this address them. They have a caucus member. All right. These are all political things. Okay, good. And well, I wonder why, I'm, I'm trying to say, <laughs> why is it that NLC, which is a body created by law, because in Section 25 of the Trade Union Act, an organization cannot control an organization. It cannot be under an organization. It's very simple. All right. Okay. We totally understand it. Thank you for taking your time to lay out what the issues are. Let me bring you into the conversation. Barrister Nadimo for Kansi. I'm sure you've been observing what's happening in your party. So what will be your response to all this? Because well, one would think after listening to <coughs> the Labour Party chairman in Enugu State, yeah. that there's possibly some misalignment. If the NLC has got what you, you call representations within the Labour Party, why are they saying they are not being carried along? Or are there members who are in the Labour Party ranks no longer carrying them along? <laughs> well, um, Alex, you see, I think uh, when uh, we open a discourse of this nature, I remember the last time you tried to invite me, I told you I cannot authoritatively speak on certain Labour Party issues. I'm at home now with the chairman by my side, who has given you a lowdown of what, has, what it has been and what it's likely to be going forward. Um, you see, the, every political party, not the only Labour Party, has its own challenges. Just like the APC had their challenges, PDP their challenges, and some other parties. But then the issue is that um, I think the NLC first off with Labour Party is beyond, you know, the matter of their members within the Labour Party caucus not carrying them along. I think it's beyond that. I'm seeing the voice of Jacob and the hand of Esau in that protest. That's the way I construe it. Um, I'm just heading to one year, being one year old in Labour Party. Having moved from PDP where we felt a lot of uh, intimidation and uh, impositions of candidates scared many of us away. And they all formed a platform in Labour Party that started at least to 80 something percent with our ideology of welfareism. So why do I say that? You see, immediately, Labour Party from 2019, um, I think, yes, from 1999 uh, to 2023, before P2B joined Labour Party, was just a conventional, like he said. They had their presence in one state in the West, and the Okeza, you know, wave here in the in Enugu State. But immediately P2B joined the party, it became a formidable force to reckon with in the Nigerian political sphere. That alone brought jitters to the ruling class. Those people who have ever maintained the oligarchy, that it is them, that it is their turn, or it is their right to rule Nigeria. That's why somebody can say openly that it is a miracle, that it is his turn. I think there is one that is being shared on the table. No more something that you cast vote on. <clears throat> now, having said that, the ruling party are not contented because, you see, even by allocation of votes, which I neck did during the 2023 election. They were afraid to rule out Labour Party entirely. 
because they know the strength they have achieved. If they have actually ruled them out and say, no, let it go to about 10 or 15 position where nobody will remember them, they could have scared off a lot of our previous. But it became like the pregnancy that we hardly can cover. So it became a problem. So, but they eventually allocated the 10th position because it's allocation. Because they have not given, they have counted the votes, they could have seen that this is the party to pit. But they're not allocated 10th position. They are not contented with like, allocating 10th position. They still came into the rank and file of the Labour Party, brought in Lamida Papa to thwart what is going on. You can see from to, uh, Lamida's antecedents from day one, if uh, the conventional Labour Party of Abuja brings a candidate, uh, Lamida will bring another candidate from nowhere. If I next says you are going to do this within so and so time, Abuja, I mean, uh, 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 Lamida will do his own either before or immediately within, so that it will cause confusion. Now, each of these uh, uh, Lamidu moves, we checkmate them, either using the courts, or by mere party propaganda. Now, the people who are forcing Lamidi to stabilize the Labour Party now saw they could not succeed, because I think their last gimmick was in Edo, when, uh, 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 what is his name, uh, Apata? Uh, 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 the former MPA president now won the primary election. Let me be brought his own candidate. Even before I next sent the forms. <laughs> now, having done, seen that Lamide has failed in all his gyms, including the time he went to the court and told the Jews, and I think it was at uh, the court of appeal, to stand up for him in a seat where the young man was, when there are other seats in the hall. Now, all those ones have failed. They now felt that since Lamide is not actually succeeding, what else are we going to do? They tried to use law enforcement agents. The phantom arrest of Abure before the convention in Benin. In law, he is a lawyer and a lawyer. When you arrest somebody, a suspect for an offense, the underlying factor is that you investigate it and charge him to court if there is any atom of a prime official case, as we call it. Now, they have arrested Abure, they have released him. The convention still, the, 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 the uh, primary election still went on. They also saw that was the last game again. Using the government agencies could not also solve the problem. They now came in to the Nigerian Labour Congress. Why do I say they now came into the Nigerian Labour Congress? You find out that Ajero, since he became <coughs> Nigerian Labour Congress uh, president, if he calls for protest today, Labour protest, Labour Congress protest, not Labour Party, and we are preparing <coughs> for the protest, a day or 24 hours before the protest, they will cancel it. <coughs> so Nigerians lost faith in him about protecting their interest. The last strike, the last <coughs> protest he called, was to happen for two days. <coughs> now, people didn't trust him, but because of the tense situation in the country, the hunger, everybody wanted to protest because everybody, are tired. everybody has been, we are now tired of that APC shenanigan. So we wanted to protest. After staging the protest for the first day, the second day, he called it off. People now say, no, they are not going to call it, they will complete in two days. Now, why do I give you this analysis? What is then the interest of NLC in trying to go and bamboozle the Labour Party <coughs> secretary, push open the gate, <coughs> force themselves in, because they said Abure did not render account of a collection of forms for 2023 election. Now, Abure is not the financial secretary of the Labour Party. He is also not the internal auditor. No, is he the, but he is the alter ego, he is the head. What other they could have done if I were in their shoes? Is to do what? Call for audited accounts of the party, which will be made available to them on demand. So there's nothing hidden in particular because it is a registered entity under the uh, Company and Allied Matters uh, uh, office. So the Corporate Affairs Commission, sorry. <coughs> so it is registered. So you cannot say you are hiding anything there or that you are going to do something. You know coming out. You don't do any convention in your, in your bedroom. Yeah. You don't do a convention by sending text. Once you send text message for a convention, it has spread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nobody will tell you that it, you know, somebody did something under the bed. Yeah. So, but then again, <coughs> what I could have done if I were a Buddha or his shoes, was why these things, because uh, if you are Caesar's wife, you also try to live above board. Even these people bring out this, you call your internal auditor, call your financial secretary, organize a press conference, 
throw the whole car to the temple. Let everybody see what is there. Because you can't be preaching, you know, frugality as a political party that you hate wasteful spending. And then somebody doesn't render account. But then again, the question is, has he not even rendered account? So what test then the Labour Congress go to find out whether the account has been rendered before they now walk into his office to protest? The protest they could not do to save Nigerians. The alarm being the protest to embarrass the Labour Party. So let me go with this. That's actually the confusion there. Yeah. We'll take a quick break here on the Eastern Eye. When we'll return, we'll find out exactly how this might end. Will it be a victory for Julius Abure? So, someone is already calling him the cat with nine lives. <laughs> or is Joe Ajayo really interested in becoming the chairman of the Labour Party, in which case he's been asked to resign his position as NLC chairman and come and contest for the chairmanship of Labour Party. Stay with us when we come back. <music> Welcome back to the Eastern Eye here on Afia TV. We are reaching you live from Enugu, Southeast Nigeria. The Eastern Eye is a program that x rays the political, social, and economic developments around us. So, uh, Barrister Kashmir Abu, this, is this a soul searching time for Julius Abure? I mean, every, every time there's a problem, everybody's pointing at Abure. I mean, there has to be something. There has to be something he needs to do to actually change a narrative. Or is everything okay the way it is? Everyone wants to pick on the Labour Party chairman. Is it normal that uh, Papa came <coughs> and wanted him out? Uh, the, the, the treasurer asked him to render account. And now the NLC are saying that he's not carrying them along. Is this a soul searching time for Julius Abura and the way he is running? The party. <clears throat> well, um, for me, I have not seen anything wrong with uh, the way Abure is carrying out the functions of his office as a Labour Party chairman in Nigeria. The problem with Nigerians is that um, there's nothing you do in this country that people will appreciate. I have come to come to terms with uh, the fact that uh, any human beings who want to do the right thing should do it, not minding who is uh, complaining or who is praising you. Abure has done marvelously well because the state chairman passed a vote of confidence on him because if you go back to history, when Salam was there, be so rest in peace. They don't call for meetings of the party hierarchy. Everything was solely within the office of the chairman. But Abure came in and did wonders. Getting to be as our candidate was not easy. He took a long time, months, to convince him to join the Labour Party. Initially, it was a former CBN governor, before the former son of uh, Shim Shagare. And all failed. And Obi came on board and brought the mantra, obedient movement. And that was the tonic. So a man who, who's tenor, in whose tenor this was done should be praised. No one is a saint. Nobody in Nigeria is a saint. In the whole world is a saint. Today, uh, uh, Trump, former president of Nigeria, is being tried in criminal matters. Has been told to refund or pay 464 million do pounds or dollars. Uh, that's what you mean Donald Trump? Donald Trump, okay. yes. <clears throat> Nobody is a saint. The Americans see... Uh, they are present now as being too old, too forgetful, and cannot even control his office. Today we have a man who says, Emil Lincoln, it is my, ten, it is my, my own my turn. It is my turn. So who will be there? Why is Ajero? Ajero should leave his office 
as NC president and join the Labour Party. Because the constitution is very clear of the Labour Party. You must be a current kind of member of the Labour Party before you now begin to question. I cannot, at this point in time, as chairman of uh, um, Labour in the new state, question the accounts of PDP or APC in the state. You cannot do it. And the, court, the Lord did not say that every NSC member automatically is a member of a Labour Party. Most of them are members of APC and PDP. I'm telling you, Ajero, who is now trying to cause problems in LSC, in a Labour Party, had to go to Imo State to do the same thing. I was beaten. Black and blue. <laughs> because he has eye at the state office of, of Imo State. He wants to contest election in Imo State as governor, governorship candidate. So if he wants to contest the election for, as chairman of Labour Party, he should now leave his office. And this is distinct from Labour Party. In law, it's not, it's not an automatic thing. In law, you cannot become a member of NLC and automatically a member of a Labour Party. But typically, I think uh, it, the NLC, as it is, from the explanation you gave in the beginning, are not the only stakeholders in the Labour Party. So why is the TUC not pushing and shoving? The way NLC uh, seem to be... Very good about. question. Very good question. TUC... Disassociated themselves from the activities of Ajero. You know the reason. They told and uh, the Labour Party that by law they are not members of the Labour Party. They're only a stakeholder. Because they have an alliance formation of the Labour Party. <coughs> but the, the, in that agreement, it was stated that if you want to be a member of the Labour Party, you must go and obtain card, you must be a card carrying member of that party. And we are asking. <coughs> Let Ajero show us his card as well with the Labour Party. They will listen to him. What he has done in the Labour Party office is criminal, it's uncalled for, it's unlawful. And the chairman of the party, Abure, has said that he must take him to court for libel because that, that very day they were shouting Abure thief, Abure thief. And you cannot call a man a thief without being indicted, at least for indictment or conviction by a court of law. In law, everybody is presumed to be innocent or <coughs> until proving guilty. So there's no way you can go to an office, destroy the office, enter the office, cut away properties. It is illegal entry and conduct likely to cause breach of peace, which Ajero must account for in all the activities that he did at the party office. We are waiting for the, the next day when the party will file criminal charges against Ajero. As per our convention, the convention is going on. As planned. Nothing is stopping it. Because we cannot be approbating and equally uh, uh, approbating. At the same time, you cannot give notice to INEC and come out to say you will not do the commercial. That's against the law. INEC will now say you're not serious. And that is a, that will be a reason to desert that, that particular party in law. Mm. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, do you think that the Labour Party will recover from all this uh, implosive and uh, uh, all the turmoil that it has encountered since the 2023 elections? In fact, it, it looked like right from the point P2B picked the ticket, the Labour Party, the Labour Party seemed to be experiencing turmoil, tremor, uh, hurricanes, uh, all sorts of things have been happening to either the chairman or the, you know, something. There must be something about Labour Party in the news. Can the Labour Party survive this and still maintain its position as one of the opposition parties in the country? Well, uh, Alex, you see, if a mango tree has no fruit, she will not cluster to throw pecks and stones at that mango tree. You know that. It is only the fruit, the tree that bears fruits that attracts the attention of human beings. Labour Party, I told you before that, from 1990, uh, yes, um, from the period of this uh, uh, political dispensation, to just some two or one year ago, it wasn't as tumultuous as it is now. And uh, it is because there is now a very beautiful fruit in Labour Party. That is why everybody is angling to come in. And it is 
Like last week, I divide the politics. It's a matter of who gets what, how, when, and where. Show you it's going to be a struggle. And you don't struggle for where you don't see any benefit. You don't just, for instance, uh, I think there's one that calls the next level party. I don't think you can now get out there and go and spend your money and energy on the next level party because you don't even know who is that person. Can well, no, no. Well, it, it said that it, it was uh, Dan Wyan who was the chairman of the Labour Party because I think there was a that crisis broke out to form that he now had to form. Right. That and, and again, another point was made that actually Dan Wyong is a proper uh, uh, Labour unionist who is now occupying the position. Yes. Of so the let me just chairman. go to your question. It's That's coming from the banking sector. That's right. Let's, let's, get, let's get to your question. Whether yes. Labour Party was about, but I think the hype, you know, what is happening in Labour Party is more of a press hype. Because, like I said, every political party has its own internal challenges. So, I don't think the challenge in the Labour Party is stronger than the one I have in APC that openly criticizes themselves, even in the floor of the Senate. Or is it bigger than that of uh, PDP that face their presidential candidate and roll him down in national television? So, I don't think there is, but these ones we are having now, I think the, what people, why all this are at Abure? I think it is because maybe the young man refused to compromise the position because you can't tell me. Because if this one is sitting down here and tells you what, God, what people tell him or what people beg him to do behind the scene on a national television like this, he will show that. Because they know that there is a, a fruit in the Labour Party. And all that those other political parties will be at his neck. But he, he stood his ground, even at the risk of spending his own personal income to maintain his neutrality without trying to take the facts that will come from those people trying to entice him with it. So maybe Abure has rejected this enticement. And like you said, even if Abure, like I keep on telling people, if you think this man is wrong here or is dirty here, check where he's clean. You need to forgive the area where he's dirty because nobody is a saint. If, for instance, Abure can successfully attract someone like people to be into the Labour Party and he remains as a regional candidate, Hopefully, even for the 2027. I don't think anybody can castigate that young man. He has achieved a lot, even for that. Like I keep on telling people sometimes, I said, when Sullivan left office, I came to one national radio and told them, Bubu, you are welcome. Please, if you can't do better than Sullivan, please maintain the one he has done. Because maintaining the one has also an achievement. So you see people who have been there before Abure, and those who are going to measure who are going to be there after him. You will now wear who is because now nobody knows what value will have of our body until we lose him. So that's where I'm going. So people who think there is trauma, there is a crisis in Labour Party, there is no crisis. Because if there is a crisis, people will be putting, pointing fingers at Peter be the presidential candidate. At least they will try to rubbish him first and tell you this is the person you say is your leader. But they found nothing with him. They now felt that the only person that can now attack is Abure. So they now descended on Abure. And Abure has been weathering the storm. And if he weathers the storm till after the convention, and possibly maybe he's changed for another person, we also watch what the person is going to do. To now wear us in a colonial number, we now have Malin Kekabu. So when you marry two husbands, you know which one is better. Yeah. So uh, I think Nigerians should have patience with the young man and applaud him for the little ones they have done. All right. Then for the errors you think he must have committed or omitted to do, then you correct him. That's the, that's the hallmark of good governance. <laughs> and that's the way I see Abure and the attacks on him. Because right. they say every arrow is a pointing at Abure. Okay. No other arrow is but it's pointing at every other person. Like what I said, the young man sitting down with me here, if he tells you the kind of arrow being thrown at him, in national mm -hmm. television, you're also sure that. Okay. Because I'm mean, going like mm -hmm. Okay, I, I want to ask uh, Barrister Kasmir Abu uh, a, a very pertinent question. And just to find out the roles that those elected within the platform of the Labour Party, the roles they are playing for the survival of the party. By this, I'm asking if you are aware that those that are elected on the platform of the Labour Party nationally, I'm not talking about any state now. For instance, I'm not sure uh, anything has been said about the governor of Abia State. Is he, is he in tune and properly aligned with the party? Is he alive to the responsibility of the running of the party? And likewise, the National Assembly members, because it's not only from Enugu State that Labour Party have uh, uh, candidates that won. Uh, well, um, I think um, 
I will give kudos to Governor Alex Oti. I always said uh, you, you must have heard about the uh, impulsion that will have happened at Edo, the Labour Party. But he came quickly and solved it. The deputy governor was a third officer for Edo primaries of, of a Labour Party. And um, after the primaries, he summoned a meeting of all the contestants in Abia. And they were all there. And after a closed door meeting, they all agreed to work with Olmide Abada. Likewise, in this convention problem, he has summoned the meeting because it's the only governor we have. And um, Peter Obi was equal in attendance. In fact, there was a Zoom meeting. Let me call it a Zoom meeting. Because Obi was outside the country. And um, Obi gave his note for the convention. I'm coming from Asaba this morning, where we met as NEC. We met with the NWC and His Excellency P2B. And all agreed that we should go ahead and do the needful for survival of the party. Let me tell you, as my, my senior here rightly said, there is no family that has, don't have a problem. But the ability to solve that problem is what is used to measure any man. Labour Party has the, have their own problems. And that problem is not far from the fact that we have so many families that came together for a common purpose. So Peter, um, Alex Uti and members of the National Assembly, they have tried, let me tell you, the, and the members of the National Assembly are coming down from, the, from court cases just a few months ago. And they spent millions, you know what it involves to go into education in this country. They spent millions of Naira. And they must be given time. These monies were borrowed by them. Imagine where somebody is spending 500 million Naira up to 800 million Naira, 1 billion Naira in a case in court. How much is salary a senator or House of Rep member? They borrow this money. So we must give them chance to come to terms with themselves financially then support the party. We have three years to go. If we miss one year, for them, it's not too much. That's the problem we have in this country. We must be patient enough to allow things to settle down. So Alex Uti is doing well, very well. In the other state today, you go to the state today and talk against Alex Uti. If you come, out, if you come back with your head <laughs> or your shoulder, <laughs> then you're a very lucky man. Because <laughs> we have a man that's performing in other states. And we all know Eastern, Eastern government. In fact, he has opened up, he has, last week we signed a, a contract for construction of stadium, FIFA standard in other states. Last three weeks, he signed a contract for, for emergency of seaports seaports in other states. And the rail line now is... And rail line now is working. The geometric power plant is on. And the, and the, and the uh, power plant is yeah. working in other states. So what are we talking? In the next four years, Abia that is being referred as small London will emerge. And I urge all governors in the Southeast to form what we call economic team commission in the Southeast to develop Southeast. There's nothing that is wrong from somebody taking rail here, Moro Rail here, to Abia, Anambra, Imo, Airborne, and back to Enugu. It's possible. Why? It's a matter of somebody having that commitment. So our men and National Assembly, no, don't forget about the defections here and there. It's political. It's, that's a pure politics. You can't take it away from them. After all, during Trump, members of the Republicans say they're not going to vote for Trump. They will vote for Biden, even though they're members of Republicans. And it happened. Heaven did not fall. So any person who wants to go can go. If you leave, another person will... Rep there's no vacuum in politics. There's no vacuum in politics. So I think... Labour Party should be given a chance in South East. I am aware that in Anambra, next election, Labour Party will take over. I'm sure of that. You are confident. I'm very, very, 100% <laughs> confident that Labour Party will take over because we have what it takes to develop the South East. Forget about Nigeria. Nigeria will come to terms when they realize that they are making a mistake by 
Emilicon. They will come to terms when they know that they have made a mistake. And we are aware. All right. And we have come to terms <laughs> with the fact that we've run out of time on the program tonight on the right. Eastern Light. Thank you so much, Barrister Kasmir Abu, the Labour Party Chairman here in Enugu State, and Barrister Nadiume of Fulkansi, the Labour Party Chairman for Enugu West. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. For your analysis on the program tonight. And that's the Eastern Eye tonight. Join us tomorrow, same time. My name is Alex Abodo. <laughs> Good night. Oh.